Hi, this is Cole with AGNO3 Lab Tintypes, a nomadic tintype portrait project that typically travels New England making in-person tintype portrait commissions. Using the historic wet plate colloidium process, a large format camera, and mobile darkroom, your image can be shot in the field and developed fully, processed on site. The outcome is the finished plate, your one-of-a-kind tintype. This year, we are offering a virtual tintype photo booth. AGNO3 Labs virtual photo booth can process any of your digital images into a genuine tintype. To do this, we use the same historic wet plate process to translate your digital file into the, a unique object. Today, we are at my studio on Peaks Island off the coast of Maine, and I am going to share the wet plate colloidium process with you and produce a tintype from start to finish. We are still offering in-person commissions with some added safety precautions and adequate distancing. Tintype commissions can still be booked for 2020. Please visit agno3lab.com or contact me directly for more details and bookings. To participate in our virtual tintype photo booth, get your image files ready and visit agno3lab.com to purchase a sitting and start the process. You can also find us and more examples of our work on Instagram at AGNO3Lab. I'm going to start the process of making a tintype and chat about some of my gear and setup here at the studio. Okay, here we go. We're going to start the process of making a tintype. Um, one of the first things I like to do is uh, make sure the piece of metal I'm going to use fits in my film back here. And this one's pre-cut. Um, what this piece of equipment here is, is a film back for a 4x5 camera with the center taken out. It holds the 4x5 piece of metal with what will be the light sensitive side, the black side, facing in. Suspended with a spring on the back. And, a light, and then when you close this door, it makes it in a light type chamber. So I can move it from the dark room to the camera um, while it's wet and it will not be exposed. All right, so the first stage of sensitizing this plate, after making sure that it fits in the film back, um, is to pull off the clear plastic protective coating. Sort of work up the corner here. And this gives you a nice clean surface. Um, so the colloidian can sort of bind it in here. All right, now we're gonna float the salted colloidian across the surface of the plate. I'm gonna pour like a sand dollar size portion and sort of spread it around quickly in a process called floating. So the colloidian is a solvent-based liquid that forms into a jelly as the solvents escape. And in the colloidian are heavy metal salts of cadmium and bromide, um, which are half of the solution needed to make a light sensitive compound. So if you can see in the video, the corner of this plate starting to set up and turn tacky. So we're gonna head into the dark room to stick the plate into the sensitizing bath. So here's my dark room. I have my uh, sense silver nitrate sensitizing tank right there on the left. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is insert the plate on a dipper. So I open the lid, pull out the dipper, stick the plate on the dipper, and submerge the plate in silver nitrate. Now this is a light proof chamber that will keep the plate submersed under the liquid and the silver nitrate will bond with the cadmium and bromides and make a light sensitive compound. So when it comes out of the silver nitrate tray it will be light sensitive and I'll have to load it into the film back like we just talked about outside. Um, so it sits in here for three to five minutes to become light sensitive and then we'll head for the camera to make a picture. Alright, so it's been three minutes and I'm going to take the plate out of the silver tank and load it into the film back here. I'm going to shut the door and turn off the lights. Door is shut. Here goes the lights. Okay, so I'm taking the lid off the silver tank. Removing the dipper, grabbing the tintype. The surface we coated with the uh, colloidian is going to have a milky white substance on it and the back will be shiny. I'll load it face down into the film back. Put the spring in place. And shut the door. Uh, it's now loaded into a light tight chamber and I can take it to the camera. 
uh, when I'm making in-person tintypes, the camera would be set up outside in daylight. But for the virtual tintype photo booth, I work with a, a duplicating stand. So this just turns around and goes right into my camera here in the dark room, and we make an exposure that way. Okay, so I have my film back here, and this is the 4x5, so the pink dots represent the back of the film back. So the colloidians on this side here. I'm going to peel back the back of the camera and slide the plate holder into the back of the camera itself. Remove the dark slide, and I'm ready to make an exposure. Okay, now that the exposure is complete, I'm going to take my dark slide and replace it back into the film back so that the tintype is now protected from light and I can remove the film back. I'm going to process the tintype now. I need to take it out of the film back, so I'm going to shut the door and turn off the lights. The developer that we use is an iron-based developer that develops the plate within 15 to 20 seconds, 30 seconds sometimes. Just need enough to cover the surface quickly in a nice smooth splash. Put about a quarter of an inch in the bottom of this shot glass and keep it handy so I can find it in the dark. Now I'm going to shut off the light. Disassemble the film back by pulling out the dark slide, removing the spring, and grabbing the tin type. Here I have it surface side up and I have my shot glass and I'm going to slide it across the surface of the plate. Count to 30. Here we go. You can sort of see an image start to appear depending on the chemicals you're using, like a ghosted sort of uh, success. Like a, a representation that your chemistry worked properly. Um, and you're sort of developing this based on the count. It's sort of hard for me to keep tra track of counting while talking, but we're probably just over halfway there. Once the 30 seconds have passed, I'm going to drop the plate into the water tray, which is right below the place I'm working. And what happens in the water is it just stops the development. So I just immerse the plate in the water to stop the development, which is going to allow us to turn on the lights again. So here comes the lights. Okay. So if you want to have a look at the plate, plate in the stop bath, you can sort of see this brown outside is where we expose the image to sunlight, where image hit the plate, and the white milkiness that sort of looks like the bird is the unexposed silver that we're going to remove to make the re image reverse. So I'll take the plate out of the stopper here, sort of a cool visual, and move it to the fix, which I've moved down to a little bit better light for filming. And we can sort of watch the image reverse itself in the fixer here. And what's happening is the fixer is absorbing the white, blue, milky surface in the center. It's absorbing those chemicals that haven't been uh, hit, struck with light. It looks like we have a pretty good exposure and not really any imperfections. So this plate will be fixed until the thickest edge over here is uh, cleared so that we know all of the unexposed silver has been removed from it. Sort of can take a look at the plate out of the water, or the fixer, excuse me. Pretty cool image. Picture made with a GoPro that my son shot when we were in New Mexico. Sort of the opposite type of image that one might make with the butt plate colloidian process. Well, thanks for watching the demo. I hope that you enjoyed what we talked about today as we quickly covered the steps that make a tintype. Um, hope you're interested in participating in our virtual photo booth or maybe even booking a commission in person someplace in Maine. 
Check out our website, agno3lab.com, for more examples of our work or to get in touch. Cheers.